All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Kudabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the seven worlds of Slippest One, which is being made by form user Greg Rocks Moon. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a replacement of the standard in-game Kerbal Star System with a Kerbalized version of the Trappist One Star System, which is is pretty interesting. Now this isn't the typical sort of planet pack I tend to look at, but considering it is based off of at least our idea of what the Trappist-1 real-world solar system look, looks like, I find this quite interesting. So let's jump right on into the tracking station and have a look at what planets we do have, and let's actually zoom out and start with our new star Slippest, which is an ultra cool red dwarf at about 8,566 kilometers and radius, and all in all, a uh, pretty nice but not exactly bright star for our new home system. So it's not going to really produce you a whole lot of light, but you know enough to get around with. Now our first planet in this star system is Beta. Now it's a pretty standard rocky world, no oceans, no atmosphere or anything like that, just a fun hunk of rock in space to go and explore and actually fairly decently sized at 714 kilometers in its radius. So uh, overall, a pretty, pretty nice little world. Now the next one we do have is a Charlie, which is our one and only gas giant for this particular star system with 701 kilometers in size with having an atmosphere. I mean, clearly it's there. And all in all, a pretty nice looking thing. Not the most colorful, but overall, I mean, it's functional, so it's good. Now, our next planet is a Delta, which starts to get a bit interesting in this solar system, which is why I quite like it, because not only is it a giant hunk of rock, but it's also an ice cap. Roughly half of the entire mass of this planet is a giant ice cap, which is pretty cool. Now, it does have a thin atmosphere on it and uh, is decently sized at 497 kilometers in radius. And yeah, you got a half the world is a sun-scorched desert facing our new uh, slippest star, and the other half is just a giant freaking ice sheet, which I think is pretty fun. And this is a uh, well, we'll call it a common trend for a lot of the rest of this solar system. For instance, the next planet, Echo, which is actually our new home world, as if we turn on the toggle sights here real quick, we do of course have the Kerbal Space Center down here on the coastline. And it is uh, still of course roughly half and half between Sun Scorched Desert and Giant Ice Cap, but also has some lovely oceans in between the two, as well as a fair amount of greenery sort of hiding in the shadowy section of the planet. And that, that is pretty sweet. I actually really love the look of this world. You got all these fun little river deltas and just all these little green patches, a good few islands. All in all, a very nice looking planet with that uh, sort of 50-50 between land and ice. The one issue I have with it is um, it has a very strange seam going down the back of this planet. Not entirely sure why, but uh, there it is. Now, as for the size, it's a pretty decently sized planet at 580 kilometers in its radius and does, of course, have an atmosphere. I mean, it is where our Kerbals now live, so that's kind of important. Now, on to the next planet, which is a Foxtrot. This one a lot more ice than the other two, as well as a lot more ocean. Now, this is actually a pretty big planet at 669 kilometers in radius, does have an atmosphere, and has, as you can see, 
a whole lot of ocean to explore, which I very much love. And also does have two sizable islands, I guess technically three sizable islands here, for you to land on as sort of the primary targets. But if we actually head over here to this side of the planet, you can see quite a bit of land poking out from the ice caps over here as well. And I think one of the most interesting places is uh, that little island there and that island there. They could make for some interesting landing targets to try and, you know, not hit water. All in all, though, a very cool planet. I uh, special, Like I said, I especially do love all the ocean on this one. Now, the next one we have is Gulf. Another, you know, mostly ice planet with a bit of water and land. A bit more sun-scorched, at least, than what land is showing. Is a pretty big planet, actually. It's 733 kilometers in size. Does have an atmosphere. And uh, overall, pretty cool, pretty cool thing. A uh, little bit less land than some of the others. And uh, still a sizable ocean, though, to explore, which I do always enjoy. Now the next one we have in line is Hotel, and this one is solidly ice with no atmosphere whatsoever and is on the smaller side at 491 kilometers. All in all, though, a very big snowball for you to explore, which, I mean, hey, is cool. Go there, build some snowmen. The Kerbals will love it. And uh, then we have, uh, well, back to Slippus. So that is the solar system. Not exactly the biggest thing in the world, and all the planets are actually quite close to one another. In fact, if we head just over to Charlie here, you can very easily see the uh, planet Delta there. We have uh, whichever that one is over there, very visible. And then that one there. So they're all quite close to one another, which, you know, may make it a bit easier for you to travel around between the entirety of said solar system, but all in all, it's a, a very good little star system to enjoy. So let's just sort of go into a space probe here I put around Echo earlier, just to show off what this, this lovely new planet is like in orbit, and uh, yeah, again, giant, mostly, mostly desert planet, but hey, it's actually pretty pretty beautiful looking, frankly. And with the orange tint from Slippist, I'd say a nice, interesting new place to explore. But yes, that is pretty much it for this mod. Not a whole lot to go over in this one. It is only seven worlds after all that's right there in the name. And uh, overall, I think a very entertaining little pack. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed and that you do come back for the next one hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod but until that time thank you for watching and as always have a good one